Welcome to our unit on dinosaurs. Now class, you all know me as Miss Harold, but what you don't know is that I'm an avid dinosaur hunter. So today I'd like to take you along with me and introduce you to a couple of different dinosaurs. Come on, I think it'll be fun. Did you hear that? It sounded like a baby. Triceratops. Oh, there he is. He's right there. It's okay, little guy. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. This is a Triceratops. Can you say Triceratops? Triceratops. Good. Now, Triceratops means three-horned lizard. Triceratops inhabited North America during the Cretaceous period. They lived near lakes and water and ate tough vegetation that other dinosaurs wouldn't eat. Triceratops were herd animals. They did this for safety. There's always more safety in numbers. So therefore, they would hatch more and more eggs because they could keep their babies safe. Triceratops had a bony frill and sharp horns and it used this to protect itself. They also used their bony frills and horns to move large tree trunks to get more vegetation. Did you know that during the time of the dinosaurs there was no such thing as grass? That's why these dinosaurs actually had a bird-like beak for a mouth and that's what they used to chew up the tough vegetation. Triceratops could grow to be up to 25 feet long and nine and a half feet tall. Did you know that Triceratops weighed eight tons? Their horns alone could grow up to three feet. That's amazing. And Triceratops was one of the very last dinosaurs to roam the earth before they became extinct. Oh my gosh. What was that? Did you hear that? Oh my gosh. I think it's a T-Rex. Run! class. I think I see an Ankylosaurus. Let's go. Shh, shh. There they are. It's the Ankylosaurus. Can you say Ankylosaurus? Good. Now the word Ankylosaurus means fused lizard. Ankylosaurus was also found in North America during the Cretaceous period. Ankylosauruses were herbivores and ate large amounts of vegetation. They ate lots of low-lying plant material. So its gut, in order to sustain itself, must have been very large. It probably had a fermentation compartment to aid in digestion, which also means that it was probably a very gassy dinosaur. Ew. Ankylosaurus's topside was heavily plated, which protected him from many different kinds of carnivores. He had thick, oval plates embedded in his skin. He had two rows of spikes along his body and large horns that projected from his back. He also had a club-like tail that he would swing and try to protect himself with. He even had bony plates that protected his eye. Ankylosaurus were 25 to 35 feet long and 6 feet wide and only 4 feet tall. So actually he was just a little bit taller than you are. This animal weighed three to four tons. Wow. Did you hear that? Oh my gosh, it sounds like... It's the T-Rex! Run! What? Run! Hurry! Quick! Don't let it get us! <laughs> There's one more dinosaur that I'd like to for sure show you. But in order to do that, we're going to have to get to their water supply. And that is through there. You ready to trudge through the forest? Let's go. Brachiosaurus meant arm lizard. Brachiosaurus was found in the Grand River Canyon of North America, which is now the Colorado River. Brachiosaurus lived during the late to middle 
Jurassic period. It was an herbivore that most likely ate the tops of trees with its large chisel-like teeth. This dinosaur had a total of 52 teeth, 26 on top and 26 on bottom. Wow! Brachiosaurus would eat its food whole, and then this vegetation would be digested in its gut. Brachiosaurus is one of the largest and tallest dinosaurs found yet. He had a long neck, small head, and relatively short tail. He had longer front legs than back legs, which gave them a kind of giraffe-like stance. He had large nasal openings in the top of his head which might mean that they had a great sense of smell. This dinosaur was 40 to 50 feet tall and 85 feet long. Brachiosaurus weighed in at a total of 33 to 80 tons. That is a heavy dinosaur. Did you hear that? Oh my gosh. Guys, it's just Smiley. It's our favorite friendly little T-Rex from our classroom. Hi, Smiley. Can you say Tyrannosaurus Rex? Good. Did you know that Tyrannosaurus Rex means Tyrant Lizard King? T-Rex lived in Western North America during the late Cretaceous period. They lived in humid tropical environment in open forests with nearby rivers, and they also inhabited coastal forested swamps. Tyrannosaurus rex was a fierce predator with two massive powerful legs. T-Rex had a huge head and large replaceable teeth, so if he knocked one out, he grew a whole nother one. T-Rex had tiny little arms with two fingers on them. T-Rex had a slim, stiff tail, which helped him with balance and to make quick turns. Its body was solidly built, but its bones were hollow. They had large visual lobes in their brain, which helped them process visual information. T-Rex had front-facing eyes, which means that he had great depth perception. T-Rex's jaw was four feet long, and he had up to 50 or 60 huge bone-crushing teeth. Some T-Rex teeth found have been anywhere from 9 inches to 13 inches long. Tyrannosaurus rex was 40 feet long and 20 feet tall, but his arms, they were only 3 feet long. T-Rex weighed anywhere from 5 to 7 tons. Something happened at the end of the late Cretaceous period. Now, there are varying theories on what exactly happened to the dinosaurs. Some people believe that a meteor hit the earth and this caused a large dust cloud to go into the air, darkening the sun, which killed all the vegetation that the animals ate. Some people believe that volcanoes erupted and wiped out all the dinosaurs. No one knows for sure, but there is one thing we do know. We do know that dinosaurs existed. And how do we know this? We know this because of scientists called paleontologists. They study dinosaur fossils, and they know more about dinosaurs than any other people on the face of the earth. Fossil means dug up. Now, how did a dinosaur become a fossil, you might ask? Sometimes they would die, and they would die in mud, and over millions of years this mud would turn to stone, leaving us a fossil, like this one. This is a trilobite fossil. This is one of my own personal collection, and you can come and see this anytime in our Discovery Center. The best way to obtain knowledge is to seek it out on your own. As you know, we have all these books and all these different dinosaurs that you can look at any time in our Discovery Center in our classroom. That's it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.